Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. Uh, today we're gonna show you how to quickly diagnose your parking aid system on your Ford vehicle. They're all designed basically the same way and they all fail the same way. So we're gonna walk you through some quick pre-checks and then we're gonna get to diagnostics on the scan tool and then a few tests you can do so you can diagnose it within 30 seconds. Let's get to it. Let's go over a few pre-checks you can make uh, to see if the system is functional or not. Now there's not gonna be any kind of visual cues in the cluster here, like a regular warning lamp to show you the system is functional or non-functional and has any kind of faults in it. You need to pay attention to the park aid button right here, the manual control override where you can turn it off if you wanted to. You need to pay attention to this. So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna put the key to the run position Okay, when you put it to the run position, this should light up just like you see here. That means the module is powering up, that means the button is connected, and it's doing a bulb check on there. So everything with the module is powering up, and it's doing what it's supposed to right there. That's the first check. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to simply put it in reverse. Put your foot on the brake. You don't need to start the vehicle. We're going to put it into reverse. Now when you put it into reverse, the system of course becomes active. It starts sensing back there uh, for the park aid warning, okay? It should look just like this. No warnings, no off lit up on there, anything like that. It should look just like this while you're in reverse. So let's see if there's a fault. If there's a fault, it's going to light up and show that the system is off and non-functional. So all you got to do to test it for faults is put it in reverse and see if it lights up. Sure enough, ours lit up. That's telling you the system is non-functional, don't rely on it, and that there is a DTC set in the module. You need to diagnose it because the Park 8 system is non-functional. That's it, that's all you gotta do to test and see if it's functional or not. Got a lot of information just by paying attention to that little button. Now, let's go over to the scan tool and do some more diagnostics. Now the best way for a do-it-yourself or at home like you guys to diagnose one of these um, and get access to the ISO network that the PAM module is on is to use a cheap basic uh, ELM327 uh, adapter like this. I'll link to it down below. It's real basic adapter and it's Wi-Fi and then you can get your uh, laptop or even cell phone and you can simply download the 4Scan software, which is absolutely free. So software is free, and then the little adapter that supports uh, high-speed CAN and definitely ISO is about $20 too. So you can have a basic scan tool just for Ford vehicles. So what you want to do is just take it, plug it into your OBD2 port, make sure it lights up. That means your fuse to the uh, port is good to go, so it's lighting up right now trying to connect. Uh, we're going to make sure the key is on so the module's powered up. And then you simply come over here and launch the 4Scan software. This is some great, great software here. So um, what you want to do is make sure down in your Wi-Fi settings that it's connected to the adapter. It'll show up on there. Uh, there it is, Wi-Fi. OBD2. So let it connect to it just like you're connecting to a regular Wi Fi network. And then you can come over to the 4Scan software here. And down in the corner here, you'll see it right there. There's a little connect icon. And that's going to allow you to connect to the adapter and the vehicle. So hit that. It'll check. Found the adapter. And now, of course, it's establishing communications with the vehicle. IDs the vehicle based on the VIN and the Mode 9 data and then it'll start going through and see what modules are present. And then I think on here it also gives you the uh, any DTCs that are found right away too. Now this adapter is very basic, so it's a little bit slower uh, when it's pulling data from all these different networks on here and switching over to all these different networks. And this is an older vehicle too, but you can see it's, 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 it's listing them all on here. And uh, once it lists everything, it's gonna give you an option to save the data for the vehicle uh, VIN information. So it's finding all these different modules right now. Just kind of let it go through. I'm not sure if we can skip this or not while it's doing that. And go over 
No, it's got to read them all first. As you can see, I don't use this software very often, but it's a great little uh, bit of Ford specific software you guys can use for free. Uh, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with this software. Best part is you can, uh, you know, get basic information on just about every module in your vehicle and help you diagnose stuff for basically free. So it's going through all modules, seeing which one to respond on the different uh, network protocols, and then of course getting uh, any codes that are in them. It's kind of like what the IDS software does uh, that Ford uses. It's just kind of listing everything out that it's doing here though. And like I said, at the end, once it's done with all networks, it'll give you the option to save it or not. We don't need to save the vehicle for history. Okay, at this point, the vehicle's identified and we're able to start using the scan tool to figure things out. So what you want to do is come over here and you can run a self-test on the PAM module. And up here, you can also get all of DTCs that are read in one list, all the modules that responded and all of DTCs that were set, if any. You can click on that also. So that'll give you basic information right there too. That's history DTCs though. So you want to come over here and it gives you an option, just like the IDS software, same thing, to run an, all these other cool tests on here, but the one we're interested in right now is the Park 8 module, the PAM module. We wanna do an on-demand self-test, see what faults are happening right now. So we're gonna highlight it, and then it's kind of weird on here. Then we can come down here and you hit play button, and that will run the service procedure. So what you're li listening for, getting a little warning here, don't move the vehicle, blah, blah, blah. What you're listening for once you activate this self-test is for the little beeper for the reverse park aid. So you're gonna listen to that. That's how you know that the beeper works, but also you'll know that it's actually performing the self-test on it on demand. There it is. So right there we know we're not gonna get a DTC for that speaker. And we also know that it's running an on-demand test. So the only code I found uh, was this one right here, C1704. Very simple, rear outer right sensor fault. So it's very simple, it's passenger side outer. There's four sensors back there, and that's the one that it's seeing. So at this point, the only sensor back here that the PAM module is seeing as failed is the right rear outer sensor, which is that one right there. Now, if it was this one, it would be the right rear center sensor, and this would be the left rear center sensor, and this would be the left rear outer sensor on there. Now, what makes this really easy to diagnose is that all four of these sensors back here had the same exact part number. So we have three good sensors back here and one potentially failed sensor. The easiest way to diagnose this is to simply swap out a known good sensor into the socket of the failed sensor, okay? Just kind of swap them around and you'll see, does this fault follow or does it stay over here? If it stays over here, then you know you have a wiring concern, which is not common at all. Um, but if it follows and it goes over here and then all of a sudden this one is okay on this on-demand self-test, then you know it's the sensor itself, which is the most common. What's great about this is there's really no special tools required. Okay, don't need any tools really at all. So these sensors simply have a connector, of course, on them. You know, squeeze them on the top here and then pull them off, okay? And then they're secured to the bumper with these little tabs on the uh, bezel there. So you kind of pull it down like that. And right here is another one, okay? And then you twist and pull it out. Slides right out. So you simply swap it over with a known good one, like this one right here, it's easy to get to. And you take this known good one, put it over here, and it's potentially failed one, and put it over here. Reconnect the connector on there, and then we'll go back to the scan tool and do another on-demand self-test. All right, let's pop it out of there. Disconnect this one right here. It helps you go around the other side and kind of push the sensor through. I'm spreading with this finger and I'm pushing through on this side. That's the one we think is bad. Put it up to the side, don't mix them up. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Whatever one's easiest to get to, like I said, they're all the same part number. And then we'll spread them 
again over here and push it through. And then we connect them up. You can see I'm just kind of relaxing the ground here, doing this very easy work. Make sure you connect in right. Make sure you connect it in all the way. You can see the little locking tab up here. And you can just let them dangle at this point. We're just doing a circuit check uh, to make sure the sensor's okay. Same thing with this one. Make sure it's connected all the way. That's all you need to do. We can go back to the scan tool. All right, back over to the scan tool we go. We're simply gonna run another on-demand self-test. We're gonna click on that play button down there once again and listen for it and see what our new DTC is. Good to go, beep, beep, beep. And we have a 1710 code now. It's the only code that's setting on demand, uh, which is the right rear inner sensor on there, which is where we swapped it to. So we know it's the sensor. Pretty darn simple. Okay, so here is the latest part number for the sensors. Like I said, they're all the same going across the bumper, and just about all Ford models and years have the same exact part number also, uh, except for the newer ones where they were painted silver and white and all those other colors to match the bumpers on the newer Ford vehicles. But for a long time, they're exactly the same. So as you can imagine, it's very, very simple to come back here and install one of these. Uh, I just want to make sure that your bore and the uh, adapter here is cleaned out. So it slides right into there. And then we're just going to take our new sensor and you can just reach up and behind here and just kind of get in here. Make sure it's facing the right way. And then you simply slide it right in like that. And you push it into here, two clicks. And there you go, it'll be all flushed out on there. Give it a little push, make sure it doesn't fall back into there. And then we'll simply come on this side and we'll connect it up on there. Where is it at, where is it at? The biggest thing you need to worry about is you wanna make sure uh, this connector goes on there all the way. So make sure it's going on there correctly and straight. And then really push it over. Uh, until that locking pin on there. That locking tab actually locks it into place. All right, so let's go back to the scan tool right away. And let's see if it passes now. Same, same. Uh, let's go ahead and do another on-demand test. Da, 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 da. No errors found. Okay, there you go. That's how simple it can be uh, to diagnose and even repair one of these. So now, with this scan tool out of the way, let's go ahead and show you what it should look like on here. So we go ahead, we turn the key on. Again, it lights up, self-check. We go put it in reverse, into reverse, and there you go. Shows us fully operational on there. That's it. That's how quick and easy it can be to diagnose and repair one of these systems. I hope you guys had fun, and I'll see you next time.